Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. These Hotronics heat presses are actually amazing units. The problem is, uh, in my opinion, just my opinion, the electronics are junk. I think the screen has been replaced once, um, the power board has gone bad twice, uh, thermal runaway sensor has gone bad, just all kinds of parts inside the machine. It's a pain in the rear end to take it apart. Um, it's heavy and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm going to give you just a couple of tips here to figure out what's wrong with your Hotronics and then um, give you an option to replace all the electronics for 30 bucks if that's something you want to do. If you're like, you know what, I've had enough with Hotronics. I just want to put in my own simple controller that I want to work. So if you're interested in that, stick around. All right, the tools you're going to need to do this are pretty basic and they'll vary a little bit by if you are just diagnosing or if you're replacing a bunch of stuff, but you're going to need a basic multimeter. This one's about 30 bucks. I absolutely love it, but I will uh, link to the one that I actually used in the video, which is a $10 version of this Kiwitz. All you need to know is how to get into the little ohms symbol. And the idea is when you put your probes together, you should see something pretty close to zero. And that's really all you need. Um, you can also, if you want even simpler, you can change it to the beep setting and that will be accurate enough for the types of things that we're doing. But you will need a multimeter um, to verify that different parts are working. You'll need um, a pair of pliers or I think it's like a 12 millimeter wrench, 13 millimeter wrench to get the side handle off the unit as well as some Allen wrenches. I strongly prefer these longer ones. They just get into places better. But if all you have is something like this, it'll be a pain in the butt, but you'll get it off. Um, you'll need a couple of screwdrivers. I love these Klein multi screwdrivers. They'll do most of what you need, but you will also need some tiny screwdrivers. So I'll have a link to those as well. If you start replacing parts, you will need a wire stripper. And I used these little Wago connectors. These are triples. You'll need two of these. If you decide that you're going to replace all of your electronics, we'll get into that later in the video. And finally, this is just a reminder, my wife stole all my Kapton tape, but there is a uh, gold Kapton tape that if you do sublimation, you're probably used to seeing. And uh, I'll have a link to some of that in the description. You're going to want a wide Kapton tape because it's a good time to put all that stuff together and make sure that it's insulated. And last but not least, speaking of insulation, if you take your machine apart and the insulation's all crumbly or ripped up, it's a good time to replace the insulation and the um, grease. So anything on the machine that has grease on it, now is the time to update that grease, get some red grease. I'll show you that stuff in the video, but you're gonna wanna grease all the parts that move because it's really difficult to do once the machine's together. Because I've had to take mine apart so many times, I'm probably the wrong person to show you how to tear the machine down. So I'm gonna give you the quick overview. You're gonna to wanna to unplug it. You're going to want to get an Allen wrench in here and take this knob off the top. And then you're gonna to want to pay attention to the order of the spacers, get a couple of good pictures of this and take out these four Allen bolts on the side. You wanna do that with the machine closed so it can support its own weight. And then you're gonna take these four screws off the top and finally, if there's any screws under the top of the unit, you're going to want to get those as well. All right, I thought it'd be easier to kind of show you on the bench uh, what we're doing here and how to diagnose one of these things. The primary thing that I'm dealing with is a unit that turns on but does not heat up. But since I've got it apart, I'll kind of show you the rest of the theory of operation. So let's say that your screen doesn't turn on. The number one thing we want to make sure is, is power getting to this? This is where the power comes in. So um, what we will do is, first of all, make sure, is it plugged in? Does that outlet have power? Is the power cord good? Um, all those kinds of things. And then um, there's also a little circuit breaker on the back of the machine. It says 20 on it, and you can push that down and reset that. And finally, your power switch. Um, when you wiggle your power switch, does it does it feel normal? Has the power switch gotten soft? They're easily replaceable. I'll try to remember to do a link to the description to those. They're super easy to replace. You just swap out wires one for one. They just pop in. Um, but the first thing you want to check is, are you getting power to here? This is where the power comes in from the wall. Now, this is something that you should only do if you feel comfortable doing. But if you have the machine apart and you feel comfortable doing it, you can basically disconnect everything else from this board, including this wire here. 
and you can set your meter to AC voltage like so. So I'm gonna hit function, AC voltage. And then the best thing you should do is go around and just take your probes and stick them in a normal outlet so you can kind of get an idea of what your meter is going to do. Again, if you do not feel comfortable doing this, you should not be doing this. Uh, but we are going to go ahead, doesn't matter which side, we're gonna go ahead and stick one probe in here, one probe in here. And you can see the meter turns red, 120 volts, um, exactly what you'd expect. So with that in mind, what you would do is take the, I believe it's the black and the white wires. You can really, you're not gonna hurt anything putting the meters in the wrong probes, but you would take the wire that plugs into this and make sure that 120 volts is getting to this board. If 120 volts is not getting to this board, then nothing else you're gonna do today even matters. You need to either replace your um, little circuit breaker or replace your um, switch, but you need to get 120 volts to this board. All right, so if you are getting 120 volts to this board and your screen does not turn on at all, then there's really no way for me to tell you if it's your screen or if it's the power board behind it. And the thing with Hotronics, they're great. They do provide a lot of these things for you, but the problem is you can't return them. At least in my experience, they told me I couldn't return them. Um, and so you are buying this board and hoping for the best. You're buying both these boards and hoping for the best. Um, so that is between you and them if that's something that you want to do. Now, if your screen turns on, but the unit is not heating up, then you've got a couple of other things that you should look for. The first thing we wanna know is we wanna understand how this thing works. So basically we get power in from the wall. This shows your screen and it decides when the heater should turn on and turn off and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's a couple of things going on here. First of all, there are two wires that come out of here, which I'll show you with the meter in just a moment, but they're gonna go to these braided, um, heat resistant wires that are going to go down to the bottom. And in the bottom of the unit, we have a heating element, which is built into your platen. And then we also have a thermal runaway sensor. And the idea of the thermal runaway sensor is that if the unit gets above a certain temperature, no matter what this board says, that thermal runaway sensor will tell the thing to stop heating up. So it is possible that the thermal runaway sensor is bad and it is just telling the thing to not heat up. And we're gonna show you how to test both of those things, but we can actually eliminate that either of those things, the heating element in the platen or the thermal runaway sensor are bad by taking our meter and connecting it between those two pins. And if we do, and we actually get continuity, which means the unit beeps, or you see a resistance of around 50 ohms or in that range, like less than 100 ohms, then you know that both your thermal runaway sensor is working and your heating element is working. So let me show you that. I decided it'd be easier for you to see if I use some still shots. As you can see, I have my meter set to ohms and I have the two probes of the meter going into the holes that have the two insulated wires. And you can see that I have 42 ohms there. And that's telling me that there is a complete circuit there, which means that the electricity is going from the one wire down through the heating element, up through the heating cutoff switch, and back up to the other wire. To test the thermal switch, all you need to do is scrape away enough insulation so you can get your meter probes in there, set it to beep, and then see if you get a beep. If you get a beep, it works. All right, so we are looking at the machine from the side that has the gray thermocouple that is just plunged into the heating bed. And as you can see, I've taken the two wires off of the heating elements and I'm going to take the meter and I'm going to touch each of the places where the heating element wires were connected. And if I get continuity, that tells me that my heating element is working.
All right, although there are a few repairs that could possibly be done to this board, I'm not going to go through that in this video. Um, if you want to buy new parts from stalls, you can do that. But if you are fed up with their electronics or just not interested in doing that, you actually can replace the entire shebang, the controller, the screen, the thermocouple with a unit that you can get from either Amazon or or AliExpress for $27 from Amazon, $18 from AliExpress, and just get rid of all of their stuff with something that is much simpler. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. The unit in question is the KT8230 temperature controller, and this has two very important features that make it perfect for our application. The first thing is that it handles up to 30 amps. Your heat press is somewhere around, let's just say 18 amps to 20 amps, and so we have the overhead to power something that is more powerful than your heat press. So it is definitely rated for the current that you're going to draw. And the second thing is that it can be set for up to 572 degrees, which is higher than the heat press can actually deliver. So we are well within spec of what it takes to control a heat press. Now, you may not have ever seen one of these devices before, but they are used all over the place. They're used in incubators. People use them in homemade smokers. They use them in ovens, all kinds of industrial applications for both heating and cooling. And essentially what they're designed to do is to turn a load on or off based on the temperature. And that's exactly what you need with a heat press. The first heat press I had had a dial on it. It doesn't take a lot of technology to make this happen. So we're going to gut this whole thing.